Let's pray together. God, we thank you for this day that you've given us to celebrate your resurrection. We know that when we gather in this place, we celebrate your resurrection every single Sunday, but we know that on this day, we remember what you've done for us, all that you've done for us, by coming into this world and dying on a cross and rising just as we ourselves will be raised. We are grateful for all that you've done, and we ask that these words might be your words to your people who are gathered here this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So when is an ending not an ending? The Gospel of Mark concludes in this way that no one would expect, and that's why usually on Easter Sunday morning we reach for the Gospel according to John. His story of the resurrection ends with something that's more like an exclamation point. It's more like what we say when we get here. He is risen. He is risen indeed. But Mark is a little bit more like, wait, he's risen? His gospel ends with something that feels more like a question. He says that the women who were the first witnesses in all four gospels to go and visit the tomb, Mark says that they fled, that they were seized with terror and amazement, and that they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Later on, those who edited Mark's gospel looked at the, how it ended and said, yeah, this really won't do. We can't have them fleeing and telling no one. How's that possible? Of course they told someone. Otherwise, how would any of us be here? So they tacked on some nice little summaries to kind of wrap up Mark's gospel with a bow. Now, never mind that these summaries were totally out of keeping with Mark's own style. In most modern Bibles, if you pick up a Bible that you might have lying around your house, you'll see they're, they're in brackets to say, well, these weren't in the original. So when is an ending not an ending? Simple. When God is writing the story. The story could have ended a whole bunch of times. It could have ended in the garden. Jesus is praying, let this cup pass from me. He could have run away. He could have gone back to Galilee. He could have retired by the lake. It could have ended on Friday. It could have ended with Jesus on a cross and his disciples vanished away, never to be heard from again. It could have ended on Sunday morning. The women going to the tomb to care for Jesus' body, but not able to get in because no one was able to roll away the stone from the entrance. A stone that probably weighed, at a minimum, hundreds of pounds, maybe even a thousand pounds or more. So the question, who's going to roll away the stone, is not a small question. The story could have ended a whole bunch of times. And all those endings would have been exactly what we'd expect to happen. Given a chance to run from a death sentence, would you not run? If you saw your leader on a cross, wouldn't you say, well, I guess that's it. It must be over. When there's a thousand pound stone between you and the place where you want to get to, you might struggle against it for a while, but eventually you're going to give up and say, well, I guess I'm not going there today. See, these are the stories that humans tell. And they all make sense in some sort of a limited way. We tell stories about broken marriages, and we tell stories about job searches that keep turning up nothing, and we tell stories of cures that didn't deliver what we'd hoped they would deliver. We tell these stories with a sense of finality, like they're done, no hope of changing anything. But the thing is, these are not the kinds of stories that God tells. If the cross had been the end of the story, then evil would have won. If the cross had been the end of the story, then death and sin would have won. Hopelessness would have won. See, our stories end with periods, but the stories that God tells end with exclamation points. Now, I know that our stories are easier to believe, but they don't reflect what it is that God can do. They don't reflect what it is that God already has done. We celebrate Easter as Christ's victory, and for those who believe our victory, because by faith, his victory becomes our victory. Now, that doesn't mean that sin and evil aren't still real. That doesn't mean that death has disappeared. 
The world is still full of crosses. Trust me, it's still full of crosses. Death is a period on the end of our lives. But what we do know, because of Easter, is that the story goes on. God's still writing it. You just have to flip the page to find the exclamation point. And what's great about Easter is, and this is why we celebrate Easter, is that Jesus moved the exclamation point onto this page where we can read it so that we can see it, so that we can know what it is that God intends to do. He is risen. He is risen indeed. This is God's exclamation point on life. Now, God gives us all kinds of little exclamation points on the way to our final victory. I got the job. We're back together. Four months sober. These are all exclamation points on the way. Now, I know that some of you this morning are probably thinking, you know, when is my exclamation point going to come? Well, sometimes the thing is that the story just isn't over yet. There's still more to write. So when I go to type something on my phone, and I go to send somebody a message, what I notice about the keyboard is that in between, in between the period and the exclamation point, there's a comma. That's the first thing. There's this comma. And what that comma says is, hold on. This is what we teach kids when they're learning to read, right? Hold on, pause, take a breath. There's more of the story to come. We're getting to the exclamation point, but we're not necessarily there yet. Now that's a hard place to be. That's a hard place to live. And it's even harder when we're like most people. There was a group that did some survey work in England a few years ago, and they went door to door and they asked people questions like this. They said, do you believe in a God who intervenes in human affairs? Do you believe in a God who changes the course of history? Do you believe in a God who performs miracles? And so they tallied all the results of this. And there was one person's response that really stood out. This man had thought about it for a moment. Then he said, no, I don't believe in that God. I believe in the ordinary God. <laughs> Most of us are there. That we believe in the ordinary God. But the God of the Bible is not ordinary. The God of the Bible drops exclamation points into human history and in individual lives. So when is an ending not an ending? Well, it's not an ending when God is still writing the story. And in between all the things that we think are periods, the things that we think are final, in between those periods and the exclamation point that we know is coming, there's this question mark. If you look at your phone, you'll see there's that question mark. And that question mark is a space for us to continue to tell the story. This Lent, we've been preaching through Mark and we've been talking about if Jesus came to save the world, how do we help him do that? And the question mark that hangs over the end of Mark's gospel is the one that's at the end of this sentence. Who is going to tell the story? If the witnesses are going to run from the tomb in fear and trembling because the good news that they've heard is too hard to believe, then the question is, who's going to tell the story? Someone needs to tell it. Because Easter hope needs witnesses. Jesus needs people who can see the little exclamation points in their own lives and then tie them to this great big exclamation point that he's written in his life and in his death and his resurrection, which is his victory on Easter, God's victory over evil and sin and death. The cross was not the end of the story. God continues to write the story, and God wants to know are we going to help tell it through the words that we say, through the things that we do? Are we going to help tell the story? He's risen. He is risen.
Let's try it again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Exclamation point. Amen.